Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I wanted to go through some of my sort of favorite Mac apps that I would recommend for a new Mac because I'm sure a lot of you are new MacBook owners and hopefully there's some apps in here that are new to you that maybe you haven't heard of. I will say though that if you're a subscriber to the channel and you've seen other Mac app videos from me, um, a lot of these might be quite familiar, which I completely understand. I'm hoping that this sort of is more catered to people who maybe haven't watched those videos or are new to the channel. So I'm going to try and go through them quite quickly because I don't want to go into super detail. And some of these apps I feel like are very common, so I'm not gonna go into detail with them. The first app is Figma. So I use Figma for all of my design needs, sort of graphic design, UI design, website design, all that sort of stuff. Figma is a great app for that sort of stuff. I also recommend it just for like sketching stuff out, you know, on, on your MacBook. It's free, completely free to use, completely free to have an account, and you can share files with other people as well. It's a really, really great design app and it's by far the one I recommend. And it's not actually limited to Mac either. It also works on Windows. Next up is Final Cut Pro. So I use Final Cut Pro to edit all of my videos. People do ask, you know, what do I use to edit my videos? It's all on Final Cut Pro. Yeah, if you're looking for my camera gear and stuff, I usually leave a link to it down in the description. But yeah, Final Cut Pro I use to edit all of my videos. And then when it comes to photos, I'm currently using Lightroom. I'm not actually the biggest fan of Lightroom. But the reason I use it is because it's synced across my iPad and my iPhone and all of my photos are backed up on Lightroom as well. So just being able to quickly import in one place and then being able to quickly copy and paste settings from photos to other photos. Yeah, Lightroom just makes that super, super easy. It's my current photo editor of choice. Notion, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Notion. I feel like every YouTuber has done a video on Notion. But yeah, I use Notion for like, a lot of stuff but basically i use it for scripts for videos so i've actually got my script here in front of me for this video on notion i use it to sort of put together projects and stuff maybe i'm doing like an interior design project i can put together mood boards and stuff in notion uh, maybe i'm doing finances maybe i just want to work out pricing for a project or something like that i put that in notion as well notion is just so capable and it can do so many different things again it's free as well so well, free to a certain point. I think if you want to have sort of certain functionality or add more sort of heavy stuff to it, like big images and stuff, you do have to pay for their premium version. But I think it's well worth money because I do pay for their premium version. Next up is Pixelmator Pro. So if you're looking for a Photoshop alternative that is also faster and easier to use, Pixelmator Pro is fantastic. I've become a heavy user of Pixelmator Pro. I barely use Photoshop anymore. I just don't like Photoshop. It just feels so clunky and, and slow in comparison to Pixelmator. Pixelmator is fantastic. It has all of the features that you'd expect when it comes to photo editing. I use it a lot for like touching up photos, maybe removing stuff from a photo. It's really good at that. Whatever AI they use for that sort of stuff is just amazing. And the best thing about it is that it only costs $20. And that's $20 one-off fee. No monthly subscriptions or anything like that for it, like Photoshop. It's absurdly good value for money and I would actually happily pay more for it. It's that good. Spark. So I sort of hate the built-in mail app on macOS. I just think it looks pretty ugly and it doesn't really have nice features or anything. I mean, it, it works, it does the job, but I'm just not a big fan of it. So I use an app called Spark. Highly recommend it for those who have multiple emails, multiple inboxes. And it has clever features such as organizing your emails into things like notifications and newsletters so you don't get emails mixed up. Um, you can, of course, still have a classic inbox if that's what you're into. You can also pin emails to the top. So sometimes maybe I'm working on a project with someone or maybe I've done a campaign like a YouTube ad or something and I need to pin a certain conversation to the top. I can do that. It's great. You can also add reminders. So maybe you need to reply to an email a month down the line. Maybe you need to follow up with someone. It's really good for that as well. And it also syncs across all of my devices. So it works fantastically. Tick Tick. So Tick Tick is my current to-do app. Um, it's just the one I prefer, mainly because it can do a couple of different things that other to-do apps I haven't come across can do. So the first one is that it actually has a menu bar sort of app. So instead of opening up an app and having to go into it and find it, I can quickly just click on the menu bar and it can show me all of my current tasks that I have to do. It can also sync across all of my devices, which is great, so I can easily have it on my iPhone. I actually have a widget on my iPhone for tasks, so I can see them there as well. You can also do things like organize tasks into different categories and even add locations to them. So once you get to a specific location, you'll be shown that task, that to-do list item to do. Yeah, works really great. I'm really happy with Tick Tick. Um, the design of it isn't anything special. I think it's pretty basic, 
But to be honest, it's just a to-do app. It doesn't really need to do, look anything special. It just needs to do the job. Timing. So if you've ever wanted to see how much time you're spending in each app, or maybe how much time you're spending doing productivity or whatever else, timing is the app for you. It can track what apps you use, how long you use them for, and then it will categorize them so you can see how productive you're being. To be honest though, I don't actually use it to see how productive I'm, I'm being. I don't really care about that. What I care about is actually seeing what apps I use the most, how long I'm using them for. It's really good to see at the end of the week or at the end of the month, just seeing how much time I've spent in each app. It's great. Unclutter. So Unclutter is an app that actually sits in sort of your menu bar. So what you do is you go up to the top of your screen and then you swipe down and you get shown a sort of panel or well, three panels, three tabs, clipboard, files and notes. Uh, this gives you quick access to your clipboard so you can see your clipboard history. You can also use the files tab to store files very quickly. Um, maybe files that you need quick access to so that you can quickly sort of move them between windows. There's also the notes tab to quickly write down any notes, even though the new Mac OS does have that notes functionality, where if you hold your mouse at the bottom right, I still end up using Unclutter. I just find it easier to sort of swipe down from the top. And if you have multiple Macs, you can actually sync everything from Unclutter through Dropbox. So maybe you have a MacBook and an iMac, or maybe just two MacBooks whatever, you can sync everything between them and it works really well. Bartender, so what Bartender does is it helps organize your menu bar. So as you keep installing apps, as you start using lots of different apps, your menu bar can end up filling up with lots of different icons which can look very messy. Bartender basically just helps you hide a lot of that and then also be able to choose what's most important for you. So yeah, it's a really good way just to clean up your menu bar. You can also customize to hide items all the time or show items all the time. So yeah, very simple app, just does a good job of tidying up your menu bar. Next up is a service that I use myself and where you can find a lot of the apps that I've shared in this video, and that is Setup. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. It just feels so good to have a sponsor for a service that you already use. A good way to see Setup is a service that helps you complete certain tasks, such as quickly toggling things on your Mac with one switch, helping you focus on specific windows with Haze Over or upping your typing speed with an app called Kiki. With Setup, your app needs can be solved without the hassle of trial periods or leaving credit card details across random apps when you're only going to use them once in a while. Setup offers apps in different categories like productivity, creativity, security, and many more. With more and more premium apps and features being added on a regular basis, Setup can really help you to be always at the top of your productivity game. Think tasks, not apps with Setup. Try it for free. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. You can try it for free for seven days. I highly, highly recommend Setup. It is well worth the money. I pay for it myself. I've been using it for like a year or so now, maybe even longer. I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic service. Visual Studio Code. So I was an Atom user for a while. I used to use Atom for all of my code editing and whatever else, but now I've moved completely over to Visual Studio Code. It's a fantastic code editor for anyone who hasn't heard of it. I'm sure a lot of editors, code editors have heard of it, but one of the best things about it is that it has extensions and being able to sort of have extensions for pretty much anything is great. I also use it to edit code on my website. My website's based on WordPress and just to mess around with any other code that you know I need to mess around with. Fusio Studio Code does a really good job. Transmit, so this is just a simple file transfer app that I use for uploading and downloading content to my servers. My favorite feature is actually the sync functionality where you can have a folder on your Mac and a folder on the server and it can sync them, making sure that you know the correct files are being updated or wherever else. Yeah, just a very simple sort of file transfer app. Image Optim, so this is a free image optimizer. It's just a Mac app where you can drag images onto and it will optimize them. So if you're someone like me who works with a lot of imagery for websites and apps, this is really good. It can compress images down without losing quality, but there is also a few quality options if you really wanna play around with it. So you can really compress them down if you really want to. But yeah, Image Optim does such a good job of compressing images that I use for sort of web design and app design and stuff like that. Better Touch Tool. So this is one of my favorite apps and one of the ones that I've been using for as long as I can remember. You can use it to customize inputs and shortcuts on your Mac. So for example, with the Magic Mouse, I use a two finger tap on top of the Magic Mouse to open any new links in a browser. So to open them in a new tab, because obviously with a normal mouse, you'd usually have a scroll wheel and you have to click the scroll wheel to open a link in a new tab. Magic Mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel. So I use a two finger tap to open links in a new tab. It also has some very useful window snapping functionality. So you can easily make apps full screen 
or move them to the side to have them take up half the screen. Those are just a few of the things that I use it for, but there's so much more I can do. I feel like I don't really use it to its full potential. I feel like there are other people that can do all sorts of craziness with it. So yeah, check it out. There's a lot you can do with it. Drop zone. So this is an app that sits in your menu bar and lets you do a couple of things. You can add shortcuts to your most used folders. I have one for downloads, so I can easily move stuff to my downloads folder if I need to. You also have actions. So for example, if I have an image anywhere that I have saved, I can just drag that image onto the image search action and it will automatically open up the browser and search for that image in Google image search. So yeah, good way just to search for images. And there's so many more things you can do with it. There's lots of shortcuts and actions available. You can customize them however you like. Yeah, just a very useful utility to have. Raycast. So Raycast is essentially a spotlight alternative. It can do all the things that you'd expect Spotlight to do, such as search for files and quickly open apps, but it has other functionality, such as quick access to commands like toggling Bluetooth or quitting all applications. You can also add extensions to tap into apps and services, other apps and services such as YouTube or Spotify and many more. I also really like the way it looks. I think it looks quite a bit nicer than Spotlight. Um, it's also free to use, so check it out. I've been using it for a few months now and I'm really enjoying it. I much prefer it over Spotlight. Sip. So this is a very extensive color picker. From doing a lot of design work in general, this is a super useful app for just organizing colors and picking colors. It will keep a history of all the colors you've picked recently and you can have quick access to different palettes. So for example, maybe I have a, a color palette for my own brand, for like the Olia brand, you could say. I can have quick access to those colors whenever I need to in any app because SIP just has them sitting there all the time. I don't have to go somewhere specific to find the colors. And of course, it doesn't just have to be for my brand. I can have multiple brands, multiple different palettes and just access them whenever I like. I love it, it does such a good job. And just being able to, like I said, use the colors between apps makes my life so much easier. One switch. So as the name suggests, this gives you quick switches for various stuff on your Mac. I love using it to be able to keep my Mac awake or hide all of my windows very quickly. It can be customized too. So you can add or remove switches that you like. Yeah, just a, another nice utility to have. Next up is Downy. So if you need to download any video from any website, this is the one. I've actually yet to come across a website that doesn't work with this. Any website where there's a video, it can be the most obscure website I've ever heard of, if you know what I mean. Um, you can download videos with it. It is really, really good. I use it to download YouTube videos mainly because you can get the highest quality YouTube video and I use it just to like sort of include videos or other people's videos in my videos. It does a really good job. Yeah, if you want to download any video from anywhere, use Downy. And then finally, we have an app called Numi. This is one of my favorite sort of calculator apps. This app can pretty much calculate anything. What makes it so great is that you can use quite natural language as well. You don't have to like sort of use it as a calculator. You can do things like, you know, 500 kilograms to pounds, or maybe you want to find out like 50% of like 267,000 or something ridiculous like that. You can use quite natural language to find out sort of any calculation or convert anything. I really love it. It's just like a one sort of simple app that just does one job very well and also looks pretty good. Highly recommend it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave links to all of the apps that I've talked about in this video in the description below. Make sure to check out Setup as well. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Like I said, I feel like they're the perfect sponsor for this sort of video and it actually is a really good service. I use it myself, highly recommend it. Leave a comment below of any apps that you would recommend. I'm always on the search for other apps, anything that can help me up my sort of productivity game. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.